large television screens were installed at a stage when this initial section of the procession was not foreseen. It was presumed that there would be a huge spillover which could be accommodated in Hyde Park. Lots of disappointed people who couldn't actually find their way onto the route of the funeral procession. Now it would appear that the extension of the route has been more than adequate. The father of Dodi Al-Fayed, Muhammad Al-Fayed, appearing in public, I do believe for the first time, no, not quite for the first time since the death of his son, for whom he has grieved most deeply. Betty Boothroyd, the Speaker of the House of Commons, escorted by a member of the Metropolitan Police. And still the single bell tolls over London. Luciano Pavarotti, who was invited to sing here, declined to sing, said he was too upset, worked with the princess on several occasions, cooperated with her on her charities, she cooperated with him in his. He will not sing today, we're told. He will sing at a special concert, which is to be arranged for later in her memory and in support of her charities. to see a man who is normally in the very center of the limelight content to occupy such a subsidiary quiet position. Paddy Ashdown now moving into the Abbey. Former leader, predecessor of his, David Steele, just behind. Now, even though the crowd, I beg your pardon, the congregation is to number nearly 2,000 in this huge space and facing each other as they do across the aisle, it does seem somehow small, intimate. is now coming towards the Hyde Park Arch. We'll shortly swing around to its right, our left there. And there indeed, the arch at Hyde Park. Hyde Park where the princess frequently took out her horses to exercise them. One thinks again of the words of Cardinal Basil Hume last night at the special commemorative mass for the princess in Westminster Cathedral when he seemed almost to address her directly when he talked of a woman flawed but lovable. Indeed, a very complex character, a woman whom many misjudged to be simple. And there, Prince Philip, 
the Duke of Edinburgh, former father-in-law of the princess. He's just left Buckingham Palace. Now we're back at the entrance of the Abbey. Elton John there arriving, great friend of the princess, comforted by the princess at that funeral of Gianni Versace just about six weeks ago. Nobody thinking then that the next public funeral we would see would indeed be hers. Candle in the Wind, the very popular song which Elton John dedicated to Marilyn Monroe has been rewritten for this occasion and will be sung by the singer. And he too dressed in deep mourning for this woman. And now again we see the representatives of the charities who, as you heard, will follow the cortege. This surely will be one of the more poignant memories we'll have of this funeral. Still, it passes slowly on its way. The crowd's growing ever deeper. Many of these people, as you can see, dressed in black out of respect for the Princess Diana. This woman who never hid her imperfections, who showed her great humanity in every aspect, her enormous warmth. And there the arch commemorating the Duke of Wellington, the great victor of Waterloo, the man born in Ireland, one of the very few people to have a state funeral in the history of Britain. And just as in her life the crowds gave her flowers, they still bestrew her path with them now. Strange to reflect that first official engagement Princess Diana undertook after her marriage was to attend the funeral of Princess Grace of Monaco, who of course was also tragically killed in a car crash. And there is Sunflower. Again, signifying the end of summer, the end of a life. gates on the arch there opened for this special occasion very seldom opened 